Welcome to Quantic TV. In this episode of the Holodeck Earth series, we will be looking at something you'll be very familiar with, but our approach is from a very different angle. Our topic today is the periodic system of the elements. Do you think that's a bit old hat? Then prepare for a few surprises. As you may remember, the numbering of the chemical elements is based on the number of protons in the nucleus. So oxygen, which has the atomic number 8, has 8 protons in the nucleus and 8 electrons orbiting around it in the shell. In addition to that, there are 16 neutrons in the nucleus. The number of neutrons is always double the number of protons. Mercury has the atomic number 80. That means that there are 80 protons and 160 neutrons in the nucleus and 80 electrons orbiting around it in the shell. So we can see that the 10 oxygen atoms on the left side of the equation are, in terms of the form and number of the building blocks, identical to the form and number of the building blocks in a single mercury atom on the right side. So what makes mercury a poison and what makes oxygen a gas that is vital for life? It does not come down to the matter itself. After all, the 10 oxygen atoms contain the same building blocks as a single mercury atom. The difference between the two is that the 80 electrons that orbit around the 10 nuclei on the left side of the equation produce a different kind of information and a different vibration to the 80 electrons that orbit a single nucleus on the right side. Mercury is just as neutral and non-toxic in terms of its subatomic constituents as oxygen. This means that the toxicity is not down to the matter itself, but to the information and vibration that it releases. This would seem to validate the homeopathic approach. Through the concept of contrary vibration in the form of mercury nosodes, homeopaths do not so much treat the mercury itself they only modulate its effect on the biological organism. Just like the hard drive on your computer, which can produce all the content displayed on your screen from ones and zeros, in our universe everything, including the earth we walk on, the air we breathe and the food we eat, everything consists essentially of three building blocks. Protons and neutrons in the atom's nucleus and electrons orbiting around it in the shell. But we still haven't reached the most fascinating part of this miracle. The chemical elements become heavier the higher the atomic numbers get. Aluminium has the atomic number 13 and is a relatively light metal. Silver has the atomic number 47 and is significantly heavier, while gold and lead are really very heavy. It's somehow to be expected that the more building blocks are present, the heavier the elements will be. But how do we then explain the fact that if we add another 4 protons to lead, which has 82, we get an almost weightless and invisible gas called radon? Can you imagine a child building a house out of Lego blocks, only for everything to suddenly dissolve into gas as he adds the 86th block? And then, when he adds the 87th block, everything reappears? The full electron shells of the noble gases do not explain this phenomenon to me. It will simply remain a miracle for as long as we do not understand it. Apropos understanding, take a close look at the periodic system. There are huge gaps at the top and when we start to count 55, 56, 57, 72, whoops, something's missing which we find here at the bottom. And the same happens again at 89 there's a jump to 104. There are clearly huge knowledge gaps here. And apropos knowledge gaps, did you know that water has 40 characteristics that still cannot be explained scientifically and that a number of these characteristics are what make life possible? One reason fish can survive extreme cold in winter is because of the density anomalies of water or negative thermal expansion. Almost all materials become denser when they cool, but water is different. It becomes denser as it cools down to plus 4 degrees Celsius, but below that it starts to expand again. That's why ice forms on the surface of lakes rather than, as you might expect, at the bottom and freeze upwards, which would obviously kill all the fish. 
In the third episode we saw that all the values of the natural constants are at the level that allows life to exist as we know it. The fact that water exhibits the exact property irregularities that are favorable to life makes it even harder to see the universe as something that only exists accidentally, something not consciously created. Science still cannot explain a single one of these 40 anomalies of water. So what can we truly claim to know about the world we live in if we don't truly understand something as simple as water? I hope you'll join me again for the next episode of our Holodeck Earth series, where we will be shaking the foundation of knowledge once again. Thanks for watching, until next time.